Welcome to Loop Learnings and in today's topic we are going to look at the VBA coding for the list box and Microsoft Forms in Microsoft Access. So let's get started. If you are a regular visitor of my channel, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to Loop Learnings. Consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you get a notification whenever I upload a new video. I upload two videos in a week. One video is about soft skill, another video is about computer skills, such as the tutorial you are going to watch today. Um, this is a series of videos. Uh, today uh, it's part seven. Uh, we have already uploaded six videos on the same YouTube channel. I would recommend you to watch those six videos if you haven't watched them because then you will understand the story, what we are trying to build here. We are trying to actually build a small application, a real world example. So uh, that's what I'm demonstrating. So today's seventh part of it, and we are going to do some VB coding behind Listbox and Microsoft Forms as well. This video is brought to you by Outgo Apparels. So visit outgoapparels.com uh, and uh, you can find some t-shirts, polo shirts, caps on very economical prices. Link for the outgobarrels.com is in the description below. And links for the six videos that uh, we have uploaded already uh, are also in the description below. So let's jump right into Microsoft Access without wasting much time and let's get to do some coding as well. So now we are in Microsoft Access and uh, as you know, this is the seventh video of the series. As I mentioned at the start, if you haven't watched the first six uh, videos in this series, I would recommend you strongly to watch those videos as well. Uh, the link for those videos are in the description below. So you can understand what exactly we are making. If you have already watched, then you know that what is the next step we are going to make today. So today we are going to work on a dynamic form. So what I did since the last video, I created this dynamic form. So let me brief you a little bit what it is and what would be the function of this form. Um, this is a simple form. It has this, uh, this is a list box. So I have embedded list box into the form and we have couple of buttons to create record, search for record and show all. And this text box will be used to search record. So basically you can type whatever your search parameters are and then you hit search and it should search the information. Now the beauty of this form is that this form will be used for multiple purposes. So what do we, what do I mean by that? So if I'll go to the dashboard, as you remember, we have four different sets of information. We have information about employees, employee types, parts request and vehicle information as well. So there are two routes that you can take. First is that you can make one individual dynamic form for each of this set of information which will be a lot of forms that you are going to create in your application. The other uh, way of doing the, uh, or getting the same results is that you create one form and in that one form, you dynamically change the information. So for example, we are going to use one dynamic form, this form, but we'll be using it for all set of information. So when I click on employee here, the I want the I want the dynamic form to open. I want this dynamic form to open and display me only information related to the button that I clicked. So you can you can do that in Microsoft Access with the help of queries as well. So employee types is the same. So if I click here employee types dynamic form should open and should display all the employee types in the list box that are available in the database. Similar with the parts request. So when I click on parts request, all the parts requests that are created 
and are available in database should be displayed in the dynamic form and with the vehicle uh, as well so dynamic form it that's why it's called dynamic so in one form you are using one form and you are using it for uh, displaying for multiple sets of information and it's not only displaying the information the idea is that you can use this form to create a new record as well so let's assume that you have a uh, a dynamic form open for the vehicles and you have list of vehicles that are a, available in the database and it's available in the list box it's showing you so you can create a new vehicle by clicking on create button so we'll be looking at these things with the passage of this tutorial so hopefully uh, it will not be a huge tutorial um, if it is huge tutorial i'll split it into two uh, two videos so you can watch it easily okay so for dynamic form we are going to to coding for create button search button show all button but to open the dynamic form we have to do coding behind these buttons as well so employees employee types parts request and vehicle okay so first we will start with the coding from the dashboard behind these buttons and then we will move to the dynamic form all right so what is the logic we want to build let's assume we want to make we want to do coding behind employee button so when you click on employee button what should happen i'll go to the design mode of this what should happen is now viewing because this is dynamic form we want to see and we want to recognize determine uh, what type of information we are looking at at the moment because this is one form that we are going to use then it requires uh, your input that what kind of information you are looking at in the list box at the moment okay so when i click on this button employee employees this form should open now viewing should display employees and list box should display all the employees that are available in the database in employees table right that's what we want now to achieve these results first we need to see our data source so whether we can make our data source as table or do we need to create a query that's what we need to determine so let's click on double click on employees table now under employee table i have this these fields so employee id employee name email department employee type login and password now employee type here is one um this will not be user friendly if we will keep it like this what we can do is we can make a query query is already available so employee queue query it's already available uh here we can see that employee name employee type what is the login what is the password what else is missing so employee type is missing right we can have employee type here id is only we can have employee type oh employee type is already there so manager and what else is missing department department okay we can bring in department basically all the fields from department so you know you get the nice information about employees in this list box that's what we are looking for so let's do a little modification in this query so right click here design view we actually basically used this query for login purpose so doesn't matter it will still work what we need to do is we don't need to disturb the sequence because when we did the coding uh, behind login form uh, that's when we gave the reference of the columns so we don't want to disturb the uh, sequence of this these uh, fields uh, what we need to do we need to add fields here okay so we can have a department and what else 
employee name email we can have email as well okay so that's about it employee type is already there so we have created a query now close this we'll go here we need to do coding behind this button so what we need to know is uh, just give me a second so we'll click on design click on property sheet event and we want on click event dot 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 code builder double click so we'll get into the development environment give a little bit of space and now we can start coding and if you know that if you have been watching my videos first I would like to do a little uh, you know a little code for error handling and that's very very important and I've shown a couple of examples in my previous videos that why error handling is extremely important so let's do error handling code first so on error resume next okay now uh, the code for error handling we are going to put here so if error is not equal to zero then message box what message box contact support okay comma error number all right error error dot description comma what type of message you want to display it's will be critical and what would be the title of the message I always write this oops sorry so my keyboard is messing up with me right now All right and you have to close the if block as well and in here on error go to zero so this this code block refers to the error handling all right now we need to have the actual uh, code so what we need to do we need to open this form dynamic form and after this form is open we need this text box txt now viewing to be filled with employees okay and we want this list box to be filled with whatever data is in employees query okay that's what we want that's what we are looking for so let's go ahead and do a little bit of programming here first logic I want to build is if this welcome screen is null if for example somebody has not logged on to the database then it should give an error saying that you have to log in first to in order to open the dynamic form well this will not happen but it in rare cases it might happen so it's good to build in that uh, functionality first okay so we'll say if is null me dot this is what we are looking for so if this field is empty then we don't want anyone to go to the dynamic form so if txt employee name 
me dot txt employee name dot value is equal to true then do cmd dot beep message box and message box please log on to proceed further you can give any any type of message that you wish to do so and it will be will be critical and the title of the message will be information and my keyboard is messing up with me okay all right if that is false then proceed next so else what we need to do is we need to open the form now so dynamic form so to cmd dot open form which form do you want to open dynamic form okay that's the name of form dynamic form dynamic form so make sure that you have enter the form name correctly otherwise you will be getting error what else we want once the form is open we want this text box to to be filled with employees because we are looking at employees information so what is the name of text box txt now viewing so the code for that is forms exclamation mark dynamic form and which form so that is it and txt now viewing copy paste to avoid any error is equal to employees okay that is it also we want this button's caption to be changed at the moment if i will go to the form view you will see the button caption is just create but instead of just create if this text box has employees we want this button's caption to be changed to uh, create employee okay so it is referring to the same information so we'll uh, do the coding essentially we'll copy this so we don't have to type again all right now in here what is the name of button ptn create ptn create dot caption equal to uh create employee all right now let's test it if it is working or not remember as a developer you have to test and then you proceed to the next one so let's test it let's close this so i'm going to open form view now at the moment this is empty so we should not we should be getting an error and this application should not open the employees form so let's go ahead and click here and rest assured you get an error please log on to proceed further so let's log on to uh, the application what is the user id and password 456 okay so we'll go to the login form and welcome and now we should be if our code is successful we should have the uh, pop up window or oh, sorry dynamic form to open and it should display the employees there you go so now you can see now viewing employees and button caption has been changed to create employee so this code whatever we did is successful that's what it says now the next step is bring that query data from query into this uh this uh, list box 
that's what we want that's what we want okay so to do that we will go back to the dashboard in design view and we'll go to the employees but before we do that let's uh, double click on employees form or query so here we want to use query if i will go to the if i'll right click here go to the design view and right now it is in design view if i right click here there is another view is called sql view if i click here then you will see the sql view of the same query and that is what we are going to use for the list box so we are going to use the select uh, statement okay so we are going to use select whatever fields we want to select and then we want that to uh this to be displayed on our uh, dynamic form so there are two ways either you can copy this sql query so let's let's give me a, let me give, give you an example so we'll copy this query so we'll go here and we will double click on employees so what we need to do is we need to do coding behind the buttons event dot 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 and we'll click here so we'll continue from here now the row source of the list box right if i will uh, open the dynamic form in design view the name of list box is dynamic list and we need to have a data and its row source then only data will be displays display here if we will provide the row source here so we need to provide the row source to this dynamic list so it provides the information from the query so let's go ahead and code behind this so we'll say forms so first i'm going to show you just an example so you can understand forms dynamic form so we are referring to this form and in this form we are we want to refer to this list dynamic list so let's copy this that's why we are doing this code okay dot row source okay that's what we want row source equal to what select okay let's paste whatever we copied the sql statement uh, we'll go here we'll go to the query again we'll go to the sql view let's copy and paste the same thing here and let's see what happens okay all right now i just want you to see how the list box will look like to be able to see the information will we be able to see the information on our list box uh well yes let's go ahead log in again i hope you are following whatever i am doing employees so only uh one column is being displayed although there are a lot of columns in the query but only one column is being displayed the reason is we have not given that input in our code that how many columns to be displayed and also we want to have header of each column as well so what we can do is we can do that adjustment as well so we'll go to the design view again we'll double click on the query and we will see how many columns are actually column count so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so there are eight columns so we'll give eight column count 
will turn the column heads as true and then we will also provide the width of each column and that's the code we are going to write now so we'll go here and we'll copy this till here okay and we'll say column heads column heads we want these to be true okay and then we want column count to be eight eight columns we want to display remember there was only one column and that was first column my name uh, and now let's give the width of each column okay so width of each column how can we give is in inches so this is first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth so first column contains name so possibly we can give if my keyboard works yeah we can give 1.5 inches column uh, second column contains manage uh, employee type again 1.5 inches colon third one is login so 1.5 inches colon password perhaps one inch colon now you are giving the width and so you can adjust the width according to the type of information that you want to display for example email would have little bit bigger column size uh, whereas these two columns uh, will have smaller column size so depending on the type of information you can adjust the column uh, width as well so first second third and fourth first second third and fourth okay employee id is the fifth column so perhaps we can give 0 0.5 inches next one is also 0 0.5 inches and department we can give one inch and email we can give 1.5 inch okay now if we will open the dynamic form let's see how it will look like Let's close this yeah save login four five six hmm there is some mismatch so we are getting an error contact support design view let's figure it out what is the error and that's the beauty of doing the programming so why we are getting error there is only one way to find out so let's make this as text All right, let's do debugging again. Login. Click on employee. This is the best way, according to me, to debug. So you get right into the problem. So forms, dynamic form, list. Ah, so here, instead of column count i just mentioned column that's why we are getting an error see that's very quick to diagnose column count let's remove this all right now let's debug again let's try again Mm, still we are getting an error 
we'll see what is that error about but most importantly we are getting the data on our form so we are getting exactly what we are looking for so the data is coming from the query and uh, the column heads are being displayed so for user it is much easier to uh, learn that what kind of information is uh, required to be displayed on this form and in this list as well now let's figure it out again what is the issue so column width i think here it's fine it's fine let's do the debugging again sorry guys if you are getting bored i know this can happen but this is the beauty of uh, programming and i love this because it makes you think it makes you to diagnose the issue type mismatch so what type is mismatching okay so i haven't given a colon here Okay, let's try again. Still an error. One simple thing, if you forget, you are going to get these kind of errors. Still I'm getting error. So there is something wrong here. Form dynamic form dynamic list column widths ah <laughs> only s i'm missing s column width is also applicable but column widths because here we are talking about multiple columns so i just missed s and because of that the error is coming now let's go ahead and stop this and let's go ahead and test again employees now there is no error <laughs> so instead of just when one s letter was missing and we were getting error okay cool now the problem here is i'm not liking what i'm looking at what i would like to have is employee name employee type i would like to have email address here the sequence basically the of the columns i don't need employee id employee type i don't need that information actually um but rest i would need so first i would need employee name then i would need the department then i would need the email address then i would need the employee type so the sequence of these columns has to be changed and i'm not happy with the current sequence so we can change it very easily it will take a little bit of time let's open the query and let's go and here all right so what we want we want first we want employee name which will be emp name so select emp name what else we want then we want email email then what we want we want uh, employee type then we what we want then we want department you're getting my point guys i hope you are learning at the same time then we want login and then we want password login basically i am changing the sequence of the columns i don't want employee id i don't want employee type id i just want the rest of the fields 
so that's what i did so now how many columns one two three four five six six columns so we'll change it to six and we'll change the width as well so i think uh 1.5 1.5 is fine for the first three columns all right so employee name email type so first three columns 1.5 is fine perhaps for email we can make it two inches uh, department 1.5 inch and then login and password also 1.5 inch if it is exceeding we can always change alrighty debug save let's log in again mm -hmm. okay employee hmm interesting ha huh. so we are not getting any data you know what is the reason i again messed up <laughs> we'll go to the employee button go here we are telling what we want right we are telling the access hey select employee name email type department login password but we are not telling from where that's very important from where let's rename and copy this from this query that's what we want okay that's what we were missing and i like this you must be thinking he doesn't know but i'm doing this intentionally so if you encounter this kind of errors or issues then you know how to diagnose and how to uh, solve these kind of problems otherwise if i'll tell you all uh, you know fairy tale word and you'll not be able to diagnose anything so still we are not getting any information interesting employees okay Ah, here we have to provide comma, not columns. <laughs> small, small things makes huge difference. Let's try again. Take five. <laughs> Where is login? and there you go we are getting the information that we want it is much cleaner much better and much nicer looking uh, form right now you know I can I can I could have deleted the previous part that you know two three times we were getting some information error I could have deleted from my video but I kept it because I want you to go through that experience then only you will learn i have gone through that experience that's why i know that where i have done the mistake so i can quickly diagnose and i can quickly uh, come up this can only happen if you will try again and again again and again you will fail and you don't get disheartened of course you get disheartened but you try to find the solution how where is the problem Wh what mistake i have done so that's what i want you to go through as well so that's why i kept the uh that part of the video recording as well so you i want you to go through that so you will be able to learn right now we are getting the information here but there is one problem still the problem is i want to use another functionality from this list box so if i double click here on this record i want to see the form the employee form open now i at this point of time i cannot open that particular form and purely the reason is because i did not 
uh, provide the ID. That is the unique ID, right? So when we do the coding to on the double click event behind this list box, we have to give reference of the ID. So what access will do? Access will find that ID in the employees table and then will pop open the form for us to see or modify the records. So two things I have to do. I have one, I have to add the ID column in this list box, but we can hide it so we don't have to show it. Uh, and also I would like to um, add the code. So if I double click here, I want the employees form to open so I can do modification perhaps or just view the information whatsoever. Okay, that's the information I want. And these are the next step we are going to do. First step, get the ID in list box. Second, do the coding behind this list box. All right, let's go. So we'll go to the design view of these both forms. Okay, if we'll go to the query employee ID. So this column I want on the list box, but we can hide this column, okay? That's always a possibility. It's just me, I don't want to see those IDs available. So here we can have MP ID, comma, okay? And in here we have to, because the MP ID, employee ID is in, added into the column. So we have to increase the column counts. Here we have to provide the first columns size width so we'll keep it zero because we want to hide it we want to have the id there but we want to keep it uh, hidden okay that is done next step let's remove this so our code is completed all right save it also i want to copy this i'll tell you why because i don't want to copy and paste again and again so we'll click uh, click the select the list box now we have to do coding behind this list box what logic we have we want to build we want to build a logic that if someone if user double click on a record whatever record he or she will select from the list box we want that uh, corresponding record to be displayed in that particular form. So in this case, we are working on employees form. So we want this form to open to display the record corresponding with this ID. Okay, that's what we want. So for that, we have to do coding behind this list box. And we'll go to the event. And this time, we will not do the coding behind on click event. What we'll do, we'll do the coding behind on double click event. That's what we want, dot, 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 code builder. And in here, I'll paste that and I will remove this, okay? So now I don't have to type this error handling code again. So that's what I do. And it is advice for you as well. But when you are learning, please avoid doing that. That is only for people who are <laughs> who are expert, kind of expert, and who know what they are doing. So for them, it's okay to copy and paste. All right. Now we have to do coding behind the list box. So that coding will be First of all, we have to give a reference of this text box. So if this text box is if txt now viewing is equal to employees, then open the employee form with reference to the ID that we have added here. Okay, that's what we are looking for. So we want this if me dot txt now viewing dot value is equal to is equal to what 
employees okay then what we want well we want to open so do cmd dot open form which form we want to open we want to open employee f that is the form we want to open so i'll copy the form name so we don't you know do mistake here and the next parameter or next option is looking for uh, well we'll uh, skip this we'll skip this where condition this is where we have to provide so where condition basically is asking that because a list box will have a lot of multiple um, records so we don't want the list box to uh, we want list, list, uh, list box to see what is the ID of the record which is selected by the user and accordingly we want uh, access to display the record in the employee form. Um, I have done another, another mistake I have changed the name of the form so I have to uh, rechange it well we will see that later okay so that's what we want to do so in in our case our amp id that's what we added right if you remember equal to what equal to what percent me dot dynamic oops me dot dynamic list dot column bracket save and if okay so debug this save it let's go ahead and see if that works first of all let's see which form is that <laughs> employee form employee F right let's log in let's log in to the database let's click on employee let's double click here there you go it's successful so that's what we want so we want you know so you can modi a user can modify change the information if they wish to do so so that's why it's very important double click and now list box if there are so many employees then list box will have so many records here and that's why it's very important to give a reference of the employee id which is available here in this list box but it is hidden because it we have hidden ourselves we have hide it ourselves next action we want is we want to create employee record okay so that's what we are looking for so again we have to give similar kind of code that if the, the now viewing is employees then open the employee f form in add new record okay that's what we want so we'll click on create this time we will click on uh, on click event code builder is open and again what I would like to do is I would like to copy this code bring it here because it, it will be roughly same and in here that's it that's the change we want here now what logic I would like to build is I would like to have a text box or sorry a, a message box as a confirmation hey do you really want to create a new record if yes then click on yes otherwise click on no if you have done by mistake you know this can happen people while working on the application they can create they can click on create button and I don't want them to you know by mistake click on create button and then create a record which is not even required 
that will be a junk record so to avoid that what we will do we will give a pop-up message for the confirmation user will have to click on yes or no in order to proceed further to do that we will have to write some code block here so do cmd dot beep beep first of all and we want to give response response as a message box what message box we want to display we want to ask are you sure you want to create a new employee record question mark yep comma and this time we want to ask question plus we want to give option to the user yes or no right that's the option we want to give comma and this will be uh, information that's the title and my keyboard is messing up with me all right all right all right sorry for that all right here if response if user's response is equal to vbs then if user clicks on yes then opens the form okay that's the logic we are building to cmd dot open form which form well we want to open employee f that's the form we want to open uh, normal skip it skip it here we don't need where condition because we are adding a new record we are creating a new record so we don't need uh, where condition and this we have to select are we adding a new record editing or read only so we are adding a new record okay else if user clicks on no then basically do nothing okay do cmd dot beep and then message box what message box the action was cancelled by the user okay that's what that's the message we want to give and this will be vb information and the title would be information and we'll close this with end if we have to put another end if because there are two if blocks uh, this we have to remove save it debug it now let's test that means we have to log in again okay create employee ah i might have missed the s button let's see no it's correct so it is asking are you sure you want to create a new employee record and if i say yes the form will open so i can create a new record if i'll say no then uh, the uh, it will be cancelled okay the action was cancelled by user now if i click on yes the form is open now in here we can use a record we can create a new record so we'll say john what john cena sorry john cena <laughs> john at wwe.com department is sales service parts let's say parts employee type he's a manager employee login is john password is this save record okay close now if we will open employees form again you can see the list box is updated and john cena's record is also 
appearing on the uh, list box if i double click here i'll i can go to the same record for john cena i can make certain changes whatever changes i wish to do so so this is it guys i hope you have learned something so what we did we we uh, we did the coding behind dashboard button we did the coding behind uh, the dynamic form we brought the data from query to this list box and then we gave a reference of this list box to open the record here similar kind of approach will be taken for all the other tiles so this is how the uh, you can use the dynamic list perhaps in the next video i will show you another example of employee types and we'll click here and then dynamic list will open uh, and then we can proceed further but rest assured the methodology the approach is exactly same for all the tiles it's just the reference of the form names and other uh, fields are different so i think this is already quite a long video so let's end this video here in next video we are going to uh, put code behind this search so that will be interesting so please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet subscribed and hit the bell icon so you get a notification when i will upload upload a next video about microsoft access